Hello everybody and welcome to Cause and Effect, a show about Vetus. This is the second part of the sixth episode of the third season. And uh, we are talking about Samedi today. Um, so, let's bring up the next deck. Just do it. Pachow! Bow! Some sound effects. No, no, no foreplay with you, just like, bring up the deck! Yeah, I was... People know about watching the first ep the first uh, part of the episode and such by now. So, yes. uh, and I'm also very pumped about this deck. It's uh, it's funny. So, um, yeah, Adam, will you tell us a little bit about it? Mm -hmm. So we... when looking at this deck list, you might go, "What?" The? And that's kind of how it is. Uh, <laughs> it's a trick deck, but yeah, and the deck. The trick uh, is made possible by the use of pressing flesh, uh, which allows you to bring back an ally, uh, which was burned from play, blah blah blah. It goes back in play, ready and untapped, and can act again. On pressing flesh, combined with uh, this one, escape mental patient, makes it possible to like bring out the mental patient one turn, then next turn, rush. Pressing flesh, rush again, pressing flesh, rush again, pressing flesh, rush again. Uh, and let's get mental patient are as known kind of hard to deal with. Uh, <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, this is a rules question I don't have. Uh, if someone plays Combat Ends, does it burn still? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it burns. Because yeah. you, have, you have chosen as a strike to burn. Yeah, yeah so. burn at the end of combat if it does so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, I'll go back to the deck list now and I'll talk a bit about how that works. Uh, so the crypt is kind of 50 50 Mokavian at the tribute, 50 uh, some Sandy. That's not true yeah. actually. No. Uh, 5 Mokavian at the tribute and 5 1 caps. Yeah. Abede is uh, Sandy. You can play Pressing Flesh, but you use um, Inceptor for Pressing Flesh. To be able to play Pressing Flesh with an extra minion. And Scepter is kind of a weird card as well. So I would say, so basically, this is not uh, a Samedi deck at all. It has more Samedi than the Turbo Baron deck, so twice <laughs> as many actually. So I risk my case. Okay, okay. Uh, going back to Scepter, you. Um, it's possible you play this on a one cap, and you can make that one cap possible. Able to play three specific cards, uh, as if you had superior. One of them being pressing flesh, other being like a, not quite sure actually, grave robbing, and stealth card, and domain of Ebonite. Knight. Yeah. And then you use it either for stealth or untapped, depending on where you're at. Yeah. Uh, so. So this is a very the deck list is very neat. It works fits well together. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, bring uh, go, you have to walk me through this. How do you play it? So you bring out uh, first uh, Mercavian at tribute as fast as you can and try to get uh, get mental patient and play as fast as you can. Uh, and at the same turn that you got your first mental patient, you'll be getting a um, a one cap. Uh, or if the transfers allow uh, one turn earlier even uh, and then the turn afterwards you'll get uh, Inceptor on that vampire with pressing flesh and then the accidental patient can start rushing Okay. Uh, and you'll be getting extra accidental patients as well uh, which you might be a bit more careful with because they actually cost pool the extra ones uh, yeah but uh, yeah and uh, of course you have, uh, uh, like, you can stay untapped and play a bit of the minion superior order game, especially when you get uh, to grave rob other players. You get their minions and you have more minions than other, uh, other players, and uh, eventually you'll be able to call co Conda something. And you kind of play the game uh, from that, for the first few turns, when you get to rush, you make sure that you're in such a good position for the rest of the game because of who you rushed and which minion you stole and you kind of win by those few early turns 
Okay. How? It's kind of weird. Uh, I know. Like you have five inceptor in the deck, and that's unique. Yeah, but it, you need it early. That's why. You can use. Uh, there's an agent of power there, so you can use that yeah, to get extra pressing flesh. It's like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have one guy with the Inceptor in play, and that can play Pressing Flesh, and then most, many turns at least, not maybe most turns, but many turns you will have an Angel Power for Thanathosis, so there, there you have another one who can play Pressing Flesh, or possibly Grave Robbing if that's more of a viable option. And you could have got an Avebe in your Slot Crypt, so that's a third. So you can have, end up with three minions that can play uh, Pressing Flesh, and that's yeah. if you have one. Uh, uh, Escape Mental Patients play, you can use that three additional times, so that's four rushes from one Escape Mental Patient. And you only pay two pool for it the first time around. And uh, also if you decide to wait with that Mental Patient, you don't do the fourth rush. You get to keep the Mental Patient for the next turn, and then you have either the possibility for three rushes and keeping him to another turn, or you can use for four rushes that turn uh, for the cost of no pool. Let's see, um, also uh, the only event in this deck uh, is the uncoiling. Why not play the unmasking, Isaac? Uh, I think this is probably that you fear facing ally other ally decks and you fear they benefit more from unmasking play. Since you do rush, you very seldom block. And if you block, you only have like the one escape mental patient. That doesn't really help. So for you, it's better to destroy the unmasking. Yeah. Uh, and by by doing that, you don't have to uh, constantly uh, pause your undirected actions through the very limited amount of stuff you have. So I think that's the basic reasoning behind uh, the uncoiling. But also, I guess, uh, being able to remove materials so that a girl's deck, for instance, can't recycle the same Golconda over and over and over again. Uh, possibly some other uses as well. So, I think that's the reasoning. I really don't want unmasking in play. I don't play any events. Events can be very detrimental to my play. Therefore, I play uncoiling. I think um, that's the... If you play uh, unmasking yourself, and there's like a Jake around the table, like somewhere, uh, you rely so heavily on Domain of Night in this deck, so being forced to play the Man of Ever Night for stealth instead of untap makes you lose a lot of actions. Yeah, because you need to be able to bleed with your minions. Or just use two actions. Uh, like Pressing Flesh is a one self action in base, so you can play that and Domain of Ever Night untap and then Grave Rob later on. Mm. Uh, yeah. So having a Jake and a Mosque in play makes you lose actions. More actions than just one, you can lose two actions. Or okay, yeah, it's kind of kind of really really bad, uh, and especially since this deck can use the mental patience to rush, uh, you defensively, there's less use for uh, unmasking because that's mostly a defensive card, and rushing is yeah. it gives you the same options to be defensive more or less, and also uh, other ally decks. <coughs> Uh, you can rush with stealth with your scant mental patient in this deck, so it's easier to be defensive. Uh, sorry, the Veil of Legion says only two of them, but it's a 60 card deck, so I think uh, when it really matters, you can stealth rush. Uh, so using a scant mental patient for uh, rushing other players are more likely to be successful in a deck where you can stealth. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's most. I think those two combined. It's kind of bad that other players get intercept, and you have the defensive capabilities of uh, rushing allies anyway. Yeah, sure. So, if you want to make a comparison, I think the uh, closest deck that might be more known uh, is some sort of Dragon Beth Thrones deck. Yeah. They, are, they have different benefits and, and strengths and weaknesses and such, but kind of close to the basic idea. Rush, Grave Rob, uh, have a Gokonda and go from there. I think this deck has less hassle of getting the right cards in the right order. Because a lot of the setup is permanent. 
whereas for the Dragon Breath rounds, they can be uh, each rush is a uh, four card combo, so that's rush plus concealed Saturnite special plus a Dragon Breath rounds ammo card. And then after that, you need some sort of grey roaming. And, and the combo here is an, you need the setup, i.e., the Inceptor, uh, but after that, it's just pressing flesh and the escape mental patient and you use the same escape mental patient over and over again so you just need to draw the one and after that it's just pressing flesh yeah, I think it's beneficial to play more though but uh, the pressing flesh and escape mental patient allows you to have more rushes on total in the deck uh, yeah. the escape mental patient combined with uh, all the pressing flesh like one pressing flesh will go on the inceptor so you have eight pressing flesh to play will be 15 rushes I don't think you'll be getting 15 rushes in a, um, uh, what are they called, the, uh, we need a DBR deck. I, I'm not sure, uh, but at least this, these 15 rushes are more card efficient than the we need DBR. And I know for a fact that uh, it's very beneficial in this deck to play an even higher amount of pressing flesh, playing into like 12 or 13 or something, mm -hmm. somewhere around that number. But I think this is a very ingenious deck. Uh, yeah, we should give a shout out to Stefan Carlson, who is the author and creator of this deck, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, yeah, go on, sorry. Uh, it's very ingenious because trying to abuse the pressing flesh uh, to get... You don't constantly lose pool in this deck. It's like you get one or two escape mental patients, and you have a, sort of a control of how much pool you need to spend. After that, uh, and you have very cheap vampires like one cap, one to four caps. And pressing flesh is playable on fear. I I, um, I guess there are some other allies that you can do a similar abuse with. Probably don't have to play inceptor or some such, but. Uh, yeah, using this to advantage. And in, in this case, Stefan has totally not cared about uh, playing any Fortitude cards uh, since uh, the ally can play it. One cute thing that I can just on the top of my head is that since this uh, pressed fleshed ally can play basic Fortitude, that ally can play Daring the Dawn. And it, hmm. since they're not. they don't take any special effect from aggravated damage just up, end up taking two damage ordinary damage yeah so some something cute like that probably possible yeah that's that, that seems ingenious just thinking about it you should, you should have two daring the dolls in this deck because i'm not yeah. sure uh you need to play it as superior so that it gains three life and you mm. probably want to kill okay uh, oh it's still a non-blockable rush so that's kind of yeah nice. But and you, and you and your vampire and the um, the patient will and will burn either way when it's selected it strikes. I don't see. That. I think the biggest uh, uh, thing with that is that it's kind of uh, most of the time you want to rush every single minion that could stand in your way anyway. Since this is a weenie horde rush deck, you want to rush every single thing to uh, like Cinders. Uh, so I think the two veiled allegiance are there for the. A few moments where you actually need to rush a specific target, and the Daring the Dawns might be uh, a bit overkill. Yeah, and it doesn't help against the allies, so you're still screwed by uh, Jake or some, yeah, sort of, some such. Exactly. So it's probably yeah. better to play with Veil vale Allegiance, but like those kind of ideas, or you can play Freak Drive with an ally. I don't know which ally this could be, but like. Having that in the back, back of your head, I think it's neat. I think pressing flesh have some potential, even though the the ally get minus one bleed, but still, yeah, cute. Very, and I, I also think like this is one of the the best examples of of using um, Inceptor that I've seen. Uh, it's the only ex no, wait, I've seen some other idea, but yeah, it's one of the few ways that you can make this work. Because I think that's such a powerful card. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know like what you guys really think of Inceptor because I've thought about it a lot when it came out. Like this is broken. I can, we can really do something interesting with Inceptor, but it's hard. I believe it's hard to get something that's really like worth it. What do you guys think, Isaac? Yeah, uh, I have 
to agree. I don't think it was broken. Or, that is really cute and cool, but the main problem being is you have to put it on one cap, and therefore it gets kind of impossible to pick a card that costs blood. So you need to pick some card that is for free, and all of a sudden it starts getting kind of limited with what actual combos you can do. That's really viable, and like you can't really have a one cap rushing either. So you can't do a combat angle really. Uh, one, one. Actually, <laughs> actually, Isaac. yes, you can. actually, it's like you can. I uh, think we're gonna have to talk on. about this, but yeah. Uh, yeah. One big uh, problem with Inceptor is that it's unique. I think that's one of the biggest uh, obstacles with trying to build a, uh, that I found when I'm trying to think about Inceptor, like building decks with Inceptor. But in this works, it, the deck it works really, really well because you have uh, the divided crypt. You might not even get to one caps in play every single game, or well, at least not in starting crypt. Uh, so uh, you're fine with just one inceptor. It wouldn't even you wouldn't even have the possibility to play a second one uh, well, uh, until late in the game. So in this deck, you can uh, work around that because it's not even needed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, have you anything more to say about Inceptor? Nope, I'm satisfied. Cool. I'm bringing up Domain of Ebonite because that's one of the cards that kind of uh, uh, defines Inceptor, in my opinion. It's a stealth or multi-act card that doesn't cost anything. Yeah, it's, it's a prime example of what you could do with Inceptor, of course. Mm -hmm. All right. You could just quickly explain what we did with our multi-rush one-cap Inceptor deck, Adam, if you want to. It's All right. All right. Stand back. Check, <laughs> check this out. All right. So Come this up, is bro. this is your example of you can do a rush deck. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm not talking about physical limitations here. You know, you're talking about no, strategic no, I, limitations, or intellectual uh -huh. in in limitation if you want. Alright, so okay. you, ha you have, uh, there are a few one caps that have fortitude, I don't remember the name of them right now, but there are a few vampires, uh, so, sorry, have potence. So you play in Scepter for um, uh, Psyche and for Earth, Earthmeld, uh, and you play it for um, increased strength. So then you rush with your uh, uh, one cap and you play uh, you go to strikes, you play earth melt to untap and end combat, you play psych to start a new combat, in that combat you play as many increased strength as you need to kill the opposing vampire uh, and then you strike with the uh, throne gate which you play because you have potence already uh, and then you strike for as much damage as you like and then you're untapped and you can do it again so you just include lots of bombs rushes and uh, big game and yeah so that's an acceptor rush deck what yeah. if the opponent has Karen Crows? Well, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> now you play Earthman, then you try again, and hope he doesn't yeah. have another Karen Crows. And okay. you play four more increased strength. And repeat. Yeah. Rinse and repeat. Uh, okay. The 90 card limit is a, is a limit in this deck. <laughs> But I, I also, one of the huge flaws in this deck is, of course, that you bring up a one cap, and if people have seen the deck before, you will have nothing to rush, and it will just suck. Because you have, you have the first. It's better when people have turned up their vampires and then starting rushing them. Because you have just a one cap, and it's just suck balls. Yeah. And there is other problems as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not convinced. Sorry to say it. Okay. Uh, okay. It took a lot of a lot of thinking about making this deck. Or <laughs> so. Well, yeah. One afternoon. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. A lot of thinking. Anywho, uh, uh, people out there may have better Inceptor decks. Please send them in. We can do an Inceptor show. That would next. be a really good one, actually. Yeah. To get good. Hmm. Okay. So we'll. In the future, we will do a show about Inceptor, but now we are doing about uh, Samedi. Uh, do we have anything more to say about the uh, funny Pressing Flash uh, Escape Mental Patient deck? Not really. Gregor of Winter is a good card in this deck. What? Yeah, he is. Uh, removing aggravated damage has a big, big flaw in that it leaves the vampires in Torpor with blood left on them. 
Yes, so grave robbing and diabolizing and removing from the uh, from the torpor region is really really important with aggravated uh, damage decks. Yeah, otherwise you just end up sacrificing a escape mental patient for them losing two blood on an action. Yeah, which is not that strong. No, yeah, you want to have more effect than that. And then grave robbing is good, and Gregor Winter can burn vampires in torpor. And I know for a fact that. Uh, uh, Stefan used to play with the uh, six cap uh, Samdi, who has grave robbing as uh, an action. Eight, eight cap. Eight cap. Just set. Just set. Who has uh, uh, the grave robbing as an action, so you can have this in the deck as well. Uh, he d yeah. he d doesn't think it's worth it in this deck, but uh, actions that remove the vampire uh, remove vampires from torpor region is really powerful uh, with aggravated damage. Yeah. She's really cute because you can steal imbutes. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Hmm. Or well, you can't, but you can't because they are champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, fun deck. Um, let's uh, move on. We let's talk a little bit about the new uh, Samir equipped. What do we think about it, Isaac? In my humble opinion, it's a lot worse, uh, and mostly because they lack uh, the bleed synergy, having a good bleed crit. So you have an even bigger problem than you have with old crypt of actually having enough throughput. But one vampire that is kind of cute is Trogloditia. Trogloditia? Yeah, could you bring her up? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, isn't that a dinosaur? Uh, I, I think it... You're the paleontologist, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's something to do with having two genders. But no, I have... no, that's... An... Okay, I think we should leave this. <laughs> okay. okay. To not lose Let's respect of our viewers. Uh, so, she's kind of cute because she's a 10 cap, so she can have Inca Cog. And she's got all specs, so you have... Uh, some sort of defense. In the same way you can use the Baron for the occasional deflection to have a better defense, you can use her for, for all specs block and or bounce. Uh, so the really huge drawback is the Inferior Obfuscate, but other than that you can play the Baron deck that we talked about, the first deck we talked about, uh, yeah. with Trogloditia instead. And her special I think is kind of strong. Uh, if you have a good memory and a good uh, ability to read the table uh, and anticipate moves and such, uh, you can benefit a lot from knowing what people have on their hands. And, and everybody will, not everybody, but like 99% of the cases, you, your opponents will play monsters. Yeah. And sometimes several monsters a turn, and mostly one monster per turn. So you can have really have a uh, a good sense of what's going on on the table. It'd be really really key having. Yeah. yeah that's, that's so really she's cool. yes, she's a cute vampire. The plus strength is kind of wasted, but yeah, possibly. It's know. not as strong as plus bleed, but no. she also have a synergy with harbingers. Since she since she got is that an advantage for drawback? <laughs> Uh, if I don't know, I'm not that good with the Harbage script, but there might be some synergy if you want to do something with adding more all specs to this to have a better survivability. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking tier one here because it's Harbinger's and Skulls, but <laughs> maybe you will have get something out of playing it. Yeah. Both of them, those two clans, have the same issue actually ousting their preys. So now they can do it together. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, my, my other vampire that I had in mind was Josette, but we already talked about her. I don't know if Autumn have any other from the new group that's worth mentioning. Um, yeah, we can talk a bit about one of the most special vampires that's been added in the game. Toy? Mm, uh, toy. Uh, I spent a lot of afternoons pondering about Toy, never getting anywhere. Well, yeah, um, there is actually a deck that's kind of good, it's one of the few tables in Urubu 
which uses toy, kind of as a star vampire. <laughs> <laughs> you might not believe me, but yeah, it's a um, toy with uh, Malkavian attributes and some allies and a mosking and Kinder Spirits bleed and Babel. So toy is like a tap, untap, help supporting vampire star because he has the slave rules rule for the Malkavian attribute, and he has uh, Babel. If you don't need the slave rule, you can play intercept or untap other uh, minions. And the touch of clarity is a really strong reaction card as well. You can play with him. Yeah, kind of funny. Uh, and Not I think it has more... some strengths. Yeah, it, it ought to be the most uh, cheap vampire with superior temptation, I guess. Yeah, probably. So if you want to do some babble stuff, I guess he's good for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like my gut just tells me that 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 isn't that strong. It's okay. Well, it's still a Kinder Spirit stick, which kind of wins straight up by itself sometimes. And it's also a um, ally deck with Unmasking, which kind of wins straight up sometimes. Mm. So it has two really really strong parts of it, and Babel gives you some extra survivability options uh, for. Uh, that uh, normal ally on Mosking deck does not have. Yeah. So well, yeah. It it. It's funny. It's not tier one, tier two possibly. It can probably win some tournaments. Why can't uh, toy chest be play on toy? Because he's in the chest. Yeah. He can't <laughs> unleash himself on himself. It's it's can't be done. Okay. I think the story is something like. A pack of Sabbath vampires has that, that uh, like a uh, what is called gimp. No, no introduction <laughs> test to join the pack or some such. If I got the story right, so they put the guy in the chest with toy, and if you survive or something like that, I don't remember completely. Okay. Maybe some blogger can make a blog post about the toy chest test. Yes. Okay. Weird. Uh, yeah. yeah, funny, funny, haha, maybe. Yeah, and Not I don't, funny. if, uh, just so I get that said, I don't think his potence, Thanatosis, Obfuscate, or Fortune is relevant, actually. It's his uh, possibility to play the better demitation reaction cards, Babel, and uh, Touch of Clarity, that could yeah. kind of bring him together. Yeah, that's what I like to like about it. Yes. But uh, overall, one could say that the synergy is worse off because you have some vampires that lack fortitude in group four, five, and six. And for me, have the the biggest strength is having fortitude obfuscate combination. That's what actually yeah. for me makes the clan. So, but group six is not done, and hopefully, eventually, the weekend will produce. Bloodlines Vampire to complement the Group 6 Bloodlines, and then possibly we'll have some other options with Sandy, rather than playing Group 2. Because in my opinion, if you want to play something that's competitive, you're actually forced to play that group. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know, do you have any other deck ideas uh, with this clan that you would like to see? Or something like that? Hold on. Uh, it kind of was geared as an equipment multi-act kind of clan from the start and never really it never worked out like that but it could be fun if it would work out like that later on but right now i don't think it's competitive like jack dawson and hags wrinkles are really bad cards you can't do anything proper with it ah uh, hags wrinkles i think is Okay, uh, you have to I don't remember what Hag's Winkles does. It's either you gain stealth on a quick action or you get to free Untap. drive. Yeah, free drive for free after a quick action. So okay. if you play enough equipment, it's a really strong card. Uh, but that well, might that's the be the issue. Yeah. That, that equipment deck in itself is not strong enough. Yeah. And this. It's like a free try, but with limitations. Even though it's free, uh, and that's neat, I guess. But it's still a free try with limitations. Free but it's also a stealth, so 
Yeah. I mean, just to say it's a pretty crappy limitation is selling it short, I believe. But I still, I think too, that's the crux of the, like the issue with the card is that it, the uh, the clan order that has free travel available to them, and it's so good, even though it costs a blood, that most of the time it's better to just fill your deck with free drives. Okay. Because you you you're gonna bleed and you're gonna get reanimated corpse or what have you. There's a lot of action that you want to take that are not equipped actions, especially yeah. now with the introduction of off kilter and dark mirror of mind. Yeah, of course. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, Isak. Hello, I don't know. Isak? Yeah, I have... Uh, I just need to f find the card. Which one are you thinking okay. about? Uh, the one where you actually can... Transfusion, it's called. Which is kinda cute. Uh, superior Transfusion. Uh, you use it in combat uh, after you have inflicted any damage on the opposing minion, then you play the transfusion. That minion get a counter of some so sort, and if you have three of them, you can burn them to take control of that vampire. So you have permanent minion steal with transfusion. Though the limit being that only one transfusion on superior can be played each turn, so best case scenario, it takes three turns to take control of someone. But it, it's that's the real limitation. Just doing damage on the opposing minion is kind of easy. Yeah. So. But that, that doesn't seem good. Three turns, three actions to take one minion. Permanent. Uh, yeah. I Permanent. think it, I think the effect in itself is very strong. Three actions to take control of someone permanently. Of course, this is at its best if the meta is a very high cap meta. And you do this to some inner circle or some such, then it's at, as it's at its best, yeah. and it's it's not limited in the way that um, it's one particular vampire that needs to do this. It's oh. you put the counters on the minion, and when you have three of these counters, it is yours, no matter which of your vampires put them there. So they can't really circumvent this, like sense reparation. You can circumvent it by banishing that vampire, or removing it, or, or rushing it and destroying it. Like, the transfusion counters stay on the uh, transfused vampire un until end of time. Well, if you compare transfusion to, say, Jusset playing Compress and stealing the vampire, or the Baron playing Compress and using Grave Robbing, it's immediate and... Yes. It, I think that's so much more powerful. Transfusion is kind of a uh, really uh, clumsy way to go about stealing a minion. Yeah. yeah. The, the, what would be the biggest advantage with this card would be that it's a combat card, so you can do it once out of turn when you block, and one in your turn when you rush, for instance, some such. But it's very, very, very difficult to block with something. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, But this is just one of those cards that's Sometimes in the back of my head I'm thinking of it because the effect is very strong, but it's difficult to pull it off. Yeah. I just wanted to mention it. Put it out there. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I don't know. Do we have anything else? No. I think no. that's all of Sunday. Yeah, that's everything to say about the clan, so nobody should ever discuss it again, <laughs> actually. <laughs> that's very arrogant of you. Uh, yes, that was a joke as well. What? Uh, ah! <laughs> okay, yeah, well, I think it's, it's kind of sum it up then. Do you have any s parting words for the summit? Well done. Uh... A clan that has so many options, it's kind of wonky in its uh, like what it can do, but it can do so much different stuff that's kind of unique to them. So uh, I can see them becoming better as people innovate more, and that's kind yeah. of fun with it. So it's a good part of the clan. It's good quality to have in a clan. You see the possibility of innovation. Cool. Is that? Uh, yeah, the starting point obfuscate uh, fortitude. I think is really awesome. Okay. Just starting there, and I, I think there are some options to innovate. High strength have abuse potential, 
so yeah. yeah there's something there yeah, yeah exactly. they probably need some new cards to be able to be tier 1 competitive but I think you can do decent enough decks as it is now uh, just on the top of my head I don't Okay, it's uh, really not interesting, probably, to, to speculate what kind of cards that the clan would need and such. People can do that online, anywhere. But on the top of my head, I would just say um, a breed card, and then we're going, listen. But, yeah. Yeah. Everybody can do with a breed card, but they have access <laughs> to a breed card. They have embrace, so... Yeah, of course. So I, I don't know. Biggest problem being survivability every time I play them. Some kind of reaction card, I think, would be needed to have that critical turn, 3, 4, 5, mm. yeah. survive. Yeah, okay. I think so too. Well, we'll leave you with that, those parting words. Samir, they need a little bit more survival, but they're fun. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, just have to check my papers. So that's it for this time, so thanks everyone for watching, and remember if you have any thoughts, comments or ideas, you can post them on our Facebook page, or send an email to the address below, which is causeampersandeffect at gmail.com. Remember to like us on Facebook, or subscribe to our YouTube account. Uh, after the show, we will post a thread on viking.net, where you can continue the discussion about Samedi, or about Inceptor, or anything you like. And uh, yeah, we will probably go on hiatus for a while now and we don't really know when we'll see you again but we will post you uh, keep you posted through the internets so say goodbye everyone goodbye Bye.